a decade has passed, but time has stood still, frozen. At 2.46 p.m. on March 11, 2011, at that exact moment, a massive earthquake struck Fukushima, causing a tsunami that killed over 15,000 people and led to one of the worst nuclear accidents in history. Overall areas around Fukushima become radioactive and thousands of people are evacuated. Many people had lost their homes and families, leaving them in fear and anxiety. In the aftermath phase, many Fukushima residents are concerned about the reliability of the information reported by the local government, and some have conducted their own independent radiation monitoring. This situation is similar to Chernobyl disaster in terms of public concerns about the reliability and trustworthiness of the existing dose estimates. Plus, none of them had a personal dosimeter when unexpected accident occur. As a result, Chernobyl employs this one method for dose estimation to evaluate the impact of the accidents on populations as well as analytical epidemiology studies and risk factor estimations. This one method is called retrospective dosimetry. And this is related to my FYP project on luminescence analysis from laptop glass screens for use in retrospective dosimetry. Do you know that many analyses have been performed using items such as chalk, kitchenware, phone glass screen for application to retrospective dosimetry? No? Yes, it is true. In fact, it is more than that. I'm choosing laptop glass screen as my sample. Why? Since laptops are mostly used by people. And this including the workers who work for nuclear power. So, how to do so? Firstly, I collected three laptop glass screen from three different manufacturers, BOE, AUO, Inolox, and then I did some sample preparations uh, in, in which I cut the sample to fit the size of the fan sheet, and I cleaned, the, I cleaned it with acetone in water bath before being placed in, in an annealing oven to remove the history background. After that, the samples were irradiated with gamma sauce from the range of 2 gray to 10 gray. Then the samples will be read out using the TLD reader. The data obtained from the TLD machine was based on the electron trap in the material upon exposure to radiation and so translated into light signal which called as a luminescence through heat treatment. Another set of samples were annealed and analyze optically using energy dispersive x-ray technology EDX prior to obtain the elemental composition. So what data can we obtain from the measurement? There are a lot only from the glow curve itself. The glow curve tells you about the electron traps. As the trap electrons continue to be released from the trap, the TL intensity approaches its maximum and then decreases as the traps are depleted. Consequently, the glow curve shows the relation of the temperature used for releasing the trapped electrons and the intensity of the emitted light after the recombination of the released electrons. Recombination is a process where the electrons combine with the holes at the luminescence center, also known as the emission center. And from the glow curve, we can obtain dose response, sensitivity, linearity index, and fading. And this is what I'm going to elaborate further. So first is the dose response. Dose response is important to see the linearity. It is proven for these three types give the linearity and the R square are above 96%. Why is the linearity criterion important? This is because efficient and dependable thermoluminescent dosimeters should result in a linear relationship across a wide range of doses. We can see that BOE is the highest among the two types of sample. The second is sensitivity. From this, we can conclude that BOE has the greatest sensitivity over all doses range in comparison to the other two types of sample. The third is the linearity index. The linearity index for the ideal dosimeter should have Fd equals to 1. It should be also noted that 
Ft more than 1 indicates supralinearity. Fd less than 1 indicates sublinearity. It can be observed that BOE and Inolox show sublinear behavior, while AUO shows supralinear supra behavior. Except at 6 gray, it shows a sublinear behavior. And next is fading. What is fading? We want to see how the TL signal fades exponentially with time since the response in material decay with respect to time. You can see that it is decreasing exponentially as expected. So clearly we can see that BOE has shown to possess an excellent thermoluminescent properties that can be used as an alternative for environmental radiation dosimeter. Lastly, optical characterization. That samples are analyzed using EDX. The results shows the elementary compositions of the materials. What are the elements? According to the data, in future, since Malaysia has widely used radioactive sources in the industry and even in research. For example, in UM and UKM, they have a gamma radioactive source. And in, in nuclear Malaysia, obviously, they have many radioactive sources. The industry uses radioactive sources for a, variety of, uh, for a variety of applications. If things happen as we we have the data that is ready to be used for big data analysis.